Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at our race shop and I've got an engine that we're gonna be assembling. It's a Toyota 2JZ. One of the first steps is to blueprint it and basically we measure all of the bearing clearances, piston walls, and all the critical dimensions in the engine. The big question I wanna answer is, how do the measurements that you get from Plastic Gauge for $7 compare to a $1,000 tool? So let's get into it. What we're gonna do is measure all seven main journals here with the dial bore gauge. We'll write all that down and then we'll measure all seven of them again with the plastic gauge and we'll see what the difference is. All right, so here's our two JZ parts. We've got seven main caps, the bearings for it, and the bolts. Here's the sun and dial bore gauge. It's about $1,000 for one of these bad boys. It's a long version that goes all the way from two inch to six inch. This is the main cap. Make sure there's no burrs. Make sure everything's super clean. We'll go ahead and start putting the bearings into the main cap. You can see where the little tang lines up. That's a little part that lines up the main bearing from left to right. We'll go ahead and put them all in. We'll also clean the main bores in the block. And we're using pink lint-free rags. These are really good for engine building because it doesn't leave any kind of lint. And when the tolerances are so tight in bearings and engines, a little bit of lint can cause an issue. So now we'll pop on all of the main bearing caps. So we'll put all seven of them in before we put the bolts on. And we're just gonna put them together with the factory torque. So the way that works is we're gonna put oil on them, we're gonna to torque them up to 33 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna turn them 90 degrees after that. We'll put the bolts in, hand tighten them a little bit to get the thread started so we don't cross thread it. Then we'll use the 3 8 impact, impact them all in very lightly. Go grab our calibrated dial torque wrench. This thing's great, super accurate. You can see where you're going and the kind of momentum leading up to the torque so it doesn't take you by surprise. We'll set it to 33, which is the torque spec, and go ahead and torque everything to 33. So after torquing them, we're gonna turn them all 90 degrees. And what I'd like to do is put a silver Sharpie at 12 o'clock on every bolt. So I really keep track of what's been turned and how much. And I'll simply get a ratchet, hold it at 12 or nine o'clock or six o'clock, and then turn it 90 degrees. It's pretty simple. And then I'll double check it by seeing where the Sharpie line went. And that's definitely close enough to get within the factory specification. So here's our forged factory crankshaft. So there's two measurements that we need to get the bearing clearance with a dial bore gauge. One will be the crank journal diameter, and that's the pin diameter of the crankshaft. And in order to do that, we're gonna get a micrometer. And I always like to double check the calibration. This is a super precision two inch block, and I'm gonna use that to calibrate it. Make sure it's exactly two inch. And then we can go and measure all the crank journals. This is a two to three mic with metric and standard. So we're just gonna look on the right side here where it's two inch, plus the large graduation of 400 thousandths. There's a 25 thousandths graduation plus the 15 on the, all the way on the right, which equals 40 thousandths. And then it's in between the 15 and the 16. So we look up to the 10th and the 10th lands on five. So that's two inch 0 0.4405. Maybe I need to do another video in the future on how to read a vernier micrometer. So we'll go ahead and measure all seven of the main journals and we'll write all of that down. So here we go. They're all within about two ten thousandths of an inch. And now we're gonna set up the dial bore gauge. This is a setting fixture. So we'll put our two inch extension in. We'll set it to exactly what the crank pin diameter is. And then we're gonna zero out the dial bore gauge. So now the dial bore gauge is set to exactly what the crank pin is. So the measurement we get on the dial bore gauge will be the actual clearance. It's gonna do the math for us the way that we've set this up. Just to go over this again, what we're doing. So what we've done is we've measured the crank journal We've then set the dial indicator to exactly what the journal is. When we go to measure the inside of the bearings here in the block, the dial bore gauge zero is where the crank is, the diameter of the crankshaft. So any number larger than that is gonna be the gap in between the crankshaft and the bearing journal. That's what we're measuring is the bearing clearance. The bearing clearance is simply the difference between the inside of the bearings and the dimension of the crankshaft. And if the dimensions happen to be off, Typically, you can go get a different bearing that's a little bit thinner or thicker to change that dimension. So next, we'll remove all of the main bearing caps and we'll do the plastic gauge. The first step, we'll put the crankshaft in, dry, no oil, very clean, and we'll get our plastic gauge ready. So plastic gauge is simply round wax. It's a precision diameter, and through science and math, you can determine how much clearance there is by how much the wax smashes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little piece of the plastic gauge on each one of the main journals. We're gonna put our main bearings back in, and then we'll go through the same process again. Oil the bolts, torque it down 90 degrees, and then immediately remove it all again. 
Once we get the main cap off, you'll notice the plastic gauge has now smashed. You don't even need any other tools. It comes with it. And on the paper, you can see from one thousandths to three thousandths how wide it gets. So we're a little bit narrower than 15 thousandths, which means it's a little bit bigger. So I'm saying that yeah, that's about 16 thousandths. So you can see how on this journal, it's a little bit narrower than 15. So I'm calling it 16 thousandths. So this is where some of the error can be in introduced in the plastic gauge. So I went ahead and measured all seven of the mains, and this is what I came up with. Anywhere from 15 thousandths to 16 thousandths, with an error from zero to three ten thousandths of an inch. All right, so what's the determination here? So I would say that the plastic gauge is totally doable. If you don't need to know what the individual dimensions are of like the crank pin or the inner diameter or the bear bearing or anything, for $7, you can double check all of the bearing clearances. So I'd say use the plastic gauge if you don't have the high-end mics. Even if you have the high-end mics, if you're not calibrating them, then the plastic gauge might actually be more accurate. So thanks for watching. And if you like this content, consider subscribing. Thank you.